Hey everyone, you're watching Soundwaves TV. Chasta here, and I'm so stoked to be on set with Modern Monsters. What's up, guys? What up? Yeah. Hello. So I just saw you play Bottom of the Hill. I think it was February. We were talking about that. I think it was early February. Yeah. Um, anybody, I forget which date. It was, <laughs> it was amazing show. It was Alvy and the Breakfast Pigs mm -hmm. and Stateland Empire. Yeah. yeah. And you guys came on stage, and I had I, I knew you guys. We had played you on the Bone and Soundwaves, and we played all these songs, but I hadn't seen you live yet. Wow, you guys <laughs> come out of a cannon like whoa, pow, and it's just right in your face. Love the energy. Like, yeah. thank you very thank much. You. And it we... comes, I can tell from meeting you today, it comes from each one of you. Typically in bands like this, I find we have like kind of the talker. I'm not saying that you're like, you talk too much. But you know, we, we have a talker and then you have like the silent type. You you guys all have personality. So yeah, cheers we, to that. We just like thank to you. yell, I think. You do, you yeah. like to yell. <laughs> That's okay. That works too. I couldn't stop laughing at you in the best way possible. <laughs> I was standing, I, I... I was standing right in front of you and I was like, I love this man. <laughs> like I, oh, I want to have a beer with this guy. Like oh. your energy is just—you are living your best life. But I am living my best life. <laughs> Playing live is our bread and butter. It's you know we we record, we do you know we do everything that the normal band does. But playing live is when we explode. Yeah. Clearly, yeah. clearly, it's true. But you all do bring like your own flavor. I mean, obviously, as a front man, you don't have a choice. You got to You got to do that. How do you amp up yourself or do does that just come naturally to you? Well, I, I think it's with the guys. I know I'm with these. I'm with my kind of my best friends and yeah. kind of the, hus the husbands, the brother husbands, yeah. the brother husbands. Yeah. Oh my god, I love that. I've never heard that term. That's so cute. Yeah, and they get they get me going. You know, right before we go on, we kind of do a huddle, and then I'm already ramped up, ready to go within a couple seconds. Do we have merch that says brother husbands? I feel like we no, should. Not yeah, not good, not that's yet. That's a good idea. I feel works, that yeah. the right. <laughs> I'm like, mm -hmm. that's an idea. Between the jobs, the gigging, and the and everything, and the recording, <laughs> it's just we we got to be better about the merch. It's right? the list i know i don't know what to do with my hands well, we have the merch though <laughs> you do have merch we have it we so have add it. add to it add okay to it. brother husband's t-shirt brother husband's on the sleeve yeah, yeah i like that oh, yeah. i like it <laughs> so you guys are i would call you down and dirty rock and roll and i mean that with like the utmost compliment you know like it's just get in there and go and energy where are your influences i feel like i can hear a lot of them but like where do you each of you pull from what well, yeah, I think we have uh, a lot of the ones we have in common are probably like Raging It's Machine mm -hmm. and Metallica and Faith No More a little bit and like I grew I up know. on the Offspring. Okay. And ACDC, Ang Angus is my hero, obviously. So yeah. That's how I got started, and then my dad just showed me like he had we had all these cassettes, you know, obviously Appetite for Destruction and all that kind of just just the classics. Just, yeah. You know, that's what I grew up on, and that's mm -hmm. that's where I wanted. That's why I started playing guitar. Well, yeah. that's why I actually uh, chose my Metallica shirt today because I was like, you guys feel like um, a nod to the bands that I grew up mm. listening to <clears throat> and falling in love with and play now on the bone, obviously. Um, so it's really cool. I mean, I guess it's not. what old, What's old is new again, which sucks for me. But, <laughs> but, but you know, like you guys are on the, the younger end of the, the Bay Area music scene. Um, but it's cool to see that that's where you get your some of your influence and some of your energy. Oh, yeah. You know, for yeah. somebody like me, I'm like, round two, let's go. Yeah. You know, uh, so it's ex it, it is exciting. Uh, isn't it crazy to tell people like, you know, Thin Lizzy? And they're like, who? <laughs> See that? I know. It's it's wild. Okay, I'm going to dive into the, the weeds here. I'm going to show kind of behind the curtain a little bit. So I program the bone, meaning that I like I do all the music and all that. And um, <clears throat> so I... A lot of what we play, of course, is the quote unquote older stuff. I don't like to use the word classic, but that's what it is. Yeah. Um, but it's what's in the middle of all that and how you present that music where you get like a younger demographic. And so my goal has to been to get a younger de a demographic, right? Like the 20s, 30s, 40s. And we're doing that. And I think you guys are one of the bands I would thank because you're bringing that sound. I mean, truly, like no thank bullshit. You. Yeah, we yeah, thank you. you. Thank you're you. bringing that sound back around to your generation yeah it's it's been really fun i mean we got a bunch of good bands alvy we just played last night oh we just we didn't play with them we went and saw them last night alvy and the breakfast pigs the hot takes those guys are yes. on another level i mean it was just it was a fantastic show and i don't know there's just so many cool bands in the scene and to be part of it is it, to be part of that little click of just well the scene you guess you call it it's just it's really cool it was you know, fun too it's not just like the scene in like the city it's like you know there's the scene 
in like the North Bay. There's a scene happening in the city. There's stuff happening in the East Bay and everybody's um, coming together and working together to make things happen, to get people across bridges and to move people around and like get, and also like getting younger people excited about it. Mm-hmm. You know, I was at a, um, uh, they call it the Purple House over in Oakland. Uh, I, I had a roommate move over into that house and it's like, this spot in Oakland's been a punk rock house forever. And there, uh, they had like this Mardi Gras party and then uh, there's, it's a house of like, five or six different you know few there's a there's a family that lives there and there's a couple other people that live in like a couple different rooms and there's this uh kid that lives there and he hosts shows at the house and we saw like you know they so the adults had like this mardi gras party in the backyard and then he hosted like a punk rock show in like the living room that would spread into like the next room the next room there were like kids hanging on the porch and like i went to visit my friend i was like dude i'm gonna go hang out with the kids tonight and like we just went and sat on the porch and we watched this huge mosh pit in this living room and i was with my girlfriend and she's like i don't know if this is from like now or the 80s like this is crazy <laughs> like, dude, they were having they were having a great time and it was awesome so it was it was cool to, like experience that but then we also play with you know especially when we go to petaluma and we play the phoenix uh, we usually play with a lot of younger bands that are there because they do a lot of community and yeah. uh, uh, support there and most of the bands we play with are like you know teenage like high school to like early 20s yeah. Yeah. they look at us and go you guys are old yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. yeah. and we're like what <laughs> the old men yeah. Yeah. there's a point you brought up though um about i remember listening to this interview with eddie vetter about the nirvana you know days and pearl jam and everybody coming up in seattle and he what he said was we were just all having fun like we were going to each other's gigs like every night whoever was playing there's like that's where the party was then Pearl Jam went and played in the UK and came back and they were on the cover of Rolling Stone like they didn't even know that they had made it like or made it you know the whole scene had made it like that but he he says that he thinks that it worked for everyone because everyone was in it to win it like there was no bullshit there was of course there's competition and egos I mean you're always gonna have that but there was that element of like we're gonna go see these great bands because we love them yeah that's kind of the cool part about being in a scene is you know, you have all this music that's on the radio and all the music that's on, you know, I don't even know if they have an MTV anymore, but uh, you're, seeing, TV. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah, you're seeing, you're seeing these Great bands point. and you're like, I'm going out on a Tuesday night and I'm seeing one of the best bands I've seen right. in a long time. Right. And you know, everyone's just rocking out and you know, Band supporting bands. Band supporting That's right. bands, yeah. Yeah, and to your point, um, my second home is New Orleans, and they have this thing called Porch Fest. I don't know if you've ever heard of it. Sounds cool. Yeah, they have that here. They have it. I have, I've never been to Porch Fest. In Marin. In there's, a, there's a Porch Fest in San Rafael. Is there? Okay, yeah. and that is the coolest thing. I think that's so legendary. Like, that should be all over the bay. That should be popping up everywhere. Yeah, I mean that would that would be amazing. Just to like, didn't they do that in uh, the sunset for a while? It wasn't like Porch Fest, but they had like they would just shut down a, a couple of streets or something. Was that during COVID? Uh, it was last year. Oh, it was last year. Oh, really? Yeah. I didn't even know they did it last year. I know they did it. Like we we played it like a really long time ago. Um, and they had like they shut down some street and they had on one end a stage set up and the other end a stage set up, and then like a smaller stage set up in the middle, and they just rotated between all the stages all day. It was really, really cool. I really like the pop up idea of that one time we were doing a uh oh, it was a Metallica thing at the Chase Center and London Breed was there, of course, mayor of San Francisco. And she we it was a you know, we could ask questions saying and I asked her about like permitting and bands being able to just do whatever they want, like on just pop up on a corner and she said I'm looking at you London she said (laughs) at the time that she was really going to work on that she was going to work on like lifting permits and like just allowing people to do kind of New Orleans style Mm -hmm. maybe Nashville style whatever you know I did hear that there was like Eight new venue permits yeah, permitted, or something like that. Yeah, I didn't. Re- I didn't get the whole article there. Yeah. I kind of skimmed through, and it sounded like it sounded like a lot of uh, cafe, like some cafes and some venues and stuff. But I, like two I, venues and a lot of cafes. Not yeah. that there's anything wrong with singer songwriter uh, cafes. No, no. We've but played, for this vibe, it's a different thing. That's where, that's <laughs> where this band started. We're just yeah. Yeah. yeah, we played. We started actually. I, I think. It was, I cannot. You guys would crush a cafe. Like I can't <laughs> even imagine. Literally crush it. You would we, burn it down. <laughs> like it would not exist after modern monsters. People's ears would be bleeding. It'd be great. Dude, <laughs> we, we need coffee. We've played like smaller bars and stuff before, and like after like we were done, like there was we were the uh, in the Santa Santa Rosa. It's closed down now. What was whiskey oh, whiskey, whiskey tip? tip. Oh, yeah, whiskey yeah, yeah. tip. We started playing, and like we, I actually had like apologized to like one of the guys that worked there <laughs> because like we started playing, and like a table flipped over at one point. I think There's like glass yeah. flying. Yeah. I heard glass like a glass breaking like the whole time, and I was like. 
dude, like, I don't, I, we're not trying to do, then, but then we talked to the guys, we're like, I'm sorry, we didn't know they were going to get that rowdy, and they're yeah, like, dude, like that, we don't, we don't care at yeah. all, like, there was no, no problem and there, at all. And there's no stage at that place, so we're on the floor. <laughs> yeah, <right? laughs> yeah like, we were, it well, was, it's, <laughs> it's just two double wides, basically, yeah. together, and then, like, Hell yeah. it, it was a lot like that scene out of Blues Brothers, we just needed a chicken wire, there's yeah. a shit <laughs> <right there. laughs> Yeah. They get rowdy over there. House. It was nuts. Yeah. Roadhouse. <laughs> Especially after Co- after COVID was done, we played a show. Was it? T- it was just after the, like lockdowns were kind of lifted. It was in July, I think, and the place was like there was. I mean, we were in the base in the corner like this, stuffed in a corner, and then like people are like right here, like in front of your face while we're playing, and it's just I'm sm- I'm like smacking my guitar on people's heads. I felt kind of bad, but <laughs> he was, like it was he was bleeding at the end of the show. I, oh. I, that's because I <laughs> he hit me. Yeah. <laughs> it was nuts. I've but, seen you guys. I know. Like I'm not surprised by any of this. It sounds uh, like it's on par for your brand, and <laughs> that's great. Yeah, yeah. Blood, rock and roll, sweat and tears, and coffee. And yeah, but that place is closed now. R. I. P. The whiskey tip. Oh, oh, it's closed? You closed it down? You um, burned it down? No, maybe. It, down. it wasn't us that did that. There that was, that was someone else. <laughs> That's hilarious. So what is next for you guys? We are uh, kind of in, in the process of completing our third EP right now. Yeah. And uh, we're on a little bit of a hiatus, but we're going to get back into that after these shows. We're kind of just focusing on promoting the shows. Yep. Um, we're in transition with a producer, so uh, we got a guy. We're locked in right now, and uh, that's great. Just getting scheduled, and I think right now it's just getting shows going and working on new materials. Yeah, yeah. Um, we got a lot of new songs that are just getting developed, and uh, yeah, that's great. Well, rocking. I want to make sure we pump 420. 420. I mean, yeah. that's, <laughs> that's the thing. You know, it was funny because when this show popped up, it was Stateland Empire, you guys, and Tangent, and we knew we wanted to do a co-present show, The Bone and Soundwaves, and we we were like, oh, 420 on a Saturday, that sounds fun. Uh, so that's why we were like, you know what? F it, Bone Rock Night Out, let's oh, go. It's gonna be a blast. So, really, yeah. I'm really, I'm, that's, I'm really looking forward to it. Like that's. No, no, the Stateland Empire, when we played with them, they opened for us when we played with Alvi and them. And That's right. I'm like, what are these guys doing opening, man? These guys, need to- <laughs> <laughs> they were sick. Just, the sound is just, I don't know, it's killer. Monstrous. Yeah. Yeah. It's a yeah, killer exactly. venue. It's such a killer venue. It's iconic. It's legendary. Venue. I mean, you got Green Day playing, speaking of MTV, Green Day going live from there on MTV in the 90s. And, you know, you guys are playing there now. It's pretty yeah, damn it's cool. Rockin', it's a rocking yeah. venue. Um, I do have I do have a specific request, though, from Baby Huey at The Bone. He's a big fan. <laughs> he, his brain exploded when you went, <laughs> <laughs> when you went from, Cre- I think it was, if I remember right, it was Creed into Power Trip. Yeah. Is that yeah. right? Yeah. He was like, whoo! Like yeah, no. Out. We heard him screaming. Like, uh, <laughs> we, 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 I watched him, like, real time go from, like, Oh, all right. Uh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> like it was right up front. I watched yeah. the whole thing. <laughs> exactly we, what happened. We, uh, we t- like with the skull. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. Oh. And he's eight feet tall, so you can't, you know, miss him. Yeah, there's, there's nothing baby about that yeah. man. That that I, I could not not see him. You need to get him a modern monster shirt, and he's just a walking billboard. You owe yeah. him. We, we, we <laughs> have one. For, we have one specifically for him. Oh, do you really? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh man, he's gonna be so excited. We oh, we kind of first attempted that. We played whiskey a go go and open for Quiet Riot. Yeah. We attempted that at our show there, and we started with Creed, and half the audience kind of started like mellowing out and uh-huh. like kind of waving their hands and getting really excited, and you see a bunch of metalheads in the background with their arms crossed, pissed. Yeah. <laughs> and then, and then the as soon as we this? transitioned from Creed into Power Trip, the metalheads went wild, and then yeah. the Creed fans kind of. Like, okay, this is awesome. It's cool. You're hitting both sides We, we there. bridge the gap and all the It's cool because I love Creed. I grew up in Oklahoma and Creed was like fucking Zeppelin. Like they were so huge for whatever reason. Um, and I like them. I, I really do. I think oh, yeah. I think Dude, that Marshall they were. It's one of the, like, the greatest like to me. Like I, I'm not a huge Creed fan and I'll say that, but I do like Creed a lot. And I think Mark Tremonte is like a oh. fantastic uh, one of the best like songwriters Agreed. out underrated. like with, yeah underrated. super underrated yeah. like you know like I said I'm not like top tier Creed fan here but top tier Tr- Mark Tremonti you know that and Alter Bridge I, I got a, I got a lot of respect Alter Bridge oh yeah you gotta respect Mid-tier. the musicianship yeah yeah, yeah. I'm a big yeah. Miles Kennedy fan and the way they continued kind of grunge like they kind of showed up after grunge yeah. era ended and new metal was kind of kicking off and they kind of kept that sound going which is re- respectable yeah, yeah absolutely I think that's a really valid point well hopefully you'll have some other uh, surprises up your sleeve that will just blow baby Huey's mind we got a couple he'll, he'll be front and center so we'll be ready for it we got a couple yeah okay good we're gonna allow the fans to vote for our cover our next cover so we'll be posting and 
posting the covers and whoever votes whatever the highest votes get we'll do that cover yeah. Yeah. Especially, yeah. especially for the bottom of the hill gig we're definitely you know with this like we blew we'll everyone's <laughs> mind last time so we're gonna bring that back again and this time we're gonna get the audience involved here so definitely come out to see what we're gonna play yeah. otherwise you're gonna miss it okay just depends what kind of mood we're in maybe yeah. we'll yeah. play it maybe we won't oh, oh. Snap. okay you might even see a little bit of a maybe, Actually, you know, maybe oh we'll okay <laughs> just make a threat all right just make like, <laughs> come out <laughs> maybe <laughs> Well, I want to cheers uh, to your tiny little drink. You have a little tiny Paloma. Is that that <laughs> it? A yeah. little Paloma. But it is how, how, what's the percentage on that? What's the proof? Uh, it's 52 proof. <laughs> <laughs> now that, sir, is rock and roll. A 52 <laughs> proof a Paloma. I can get down with that. <laughs> I started at noon. It's all right. Yeah, exactly. Let's do it. Yeah. 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 Saturday morning, baby. One sip. <laughs> I love it. Yeah, one sip and slam it and down. It's done. I am thrilled to see what's going to happen for you guys. I really have high, high hopes for Modern Monsters. So find them. If you don't know who they are yet, well, now you do. Uh, so find them online. We'll see your ass 420 at Bottom of the Hill. All right. We'll be right back. You're watching Soundwaves TV.